Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 23 of Direwolf20's Let's Play of Not Too Complicated, where things are about to get complicated. Um, I'm starting to, like, flip through the chapters here and see what kind of stuff would behoove me to get up and running, right? Um, so, I mean, we've done a lot with Equivalent Exchange. I could start doing, like, EMC generation, but I think I'm going to be hard-pressed to beat the Emerald Farm that I have going on in terms of EMC making. Uh, but there's some stuff in here I might want to make. You know, we might want to get into the, the more advanced matters. Uh, some better armor, probably, is something I want to get to at some point. Maybe check out some of the red matter tools and see, you know, how cool they are these days. Um, in addition to that, I also happen to notice there's an overworld portal and a NTC portal. That's kind of cool. Uh, that's nifty. So the overworld portal will teleport me to the overworld. That's cool. Uh, just FYI, it's a thing. So, might want to check that out at some point. I don't even know if the overworld, like, has... I guess it does have ore gen, right? And, like, is there any ore that you have to get from the overworld? I have no idea. We'll find out. There's nothing in the getting started chapter about going to the overworld. I mean, there was stuff about going to the end and going to the, you know, the, the nether. So... You know, we'll see what happens there. So I started looking at, like, so what's progression look like? Like, what's the next stuff we have to do? I'd like to work towards mechanism. Uh, that said, mechanism is going to be a little bit of effort to get into. Primarily because, uh, first off, we're going to need to make steel casings, which is going to need some plastic blocks, which is going to need HDPE pellets, which don't look too bad. Uh, we, made, we, we need liquid ethylene, which we can get from fractioning ethane which we can get from the distillation tower. And then we need oxygen, which is in that alchemistry mod, which I think is a pretty late tier mod, though it doesn't look too bad. We do need enriched diamonds from mechanism. So we need to get mechanism before we can make this machine, but we can use liquid oxygen in the fractioning still from thermal to get these oxygen items. And that liquid oxygen can either be laser drilled up, but it can also be pyrolyzed from flint. A uh, very small amount of oxygen from flint in the pyrolyzer, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a thing that we could look at. So that's probably how we get the oxygen. Now, the more difficult challenge, I think, is getting into, like, the first tier of machines. Normally, we make some metallurgic infusers, right? Check out the recipe for this bad boy. Uh, lots of plastic blocks, lots of pink slime, which we've made before. Osmium plates, which shouldn't be a problem. Diamond furnace is no big deal. Compressed blocks of iron, not that big a deal. Uh, I don't think. Just a bunch of EMC. But this guy is where things get complicated. Um, so to get into populated basic PCBs, we're going to need the assembler from the custom machinery mod. Uh, now it's a complicated recipe in itself to make, but it's an also multi-block, I think? Maybe not, actually. I'm not sure. Um, so there's a custom assembly mod uh, that we're going to want to probably be poking our noses into. It looks like there's a handful of machines in here. Um... You know, there's, there's a clean room and a pollution capture facility, uh, some basic machine upgrades. There's the slice and splice. Uh, this guy makes, remember these things? Uh, yeah, and our IO stuffs. Cool. I, you know, we'll figure out what they're for. Uh, they can be used to make antimatter relays mark too. All right, cool. Well, there you go. Now we know the answer to that. Zombie electrodes, I'm not seeing any use for them, but Z-Logic controllers can make energy collectors mark too. Nice. Um, there's an end resin process controller. That's another multi-block. I have no idea what it's for. Uh, some of these you can like look at their controller and, and do the use function and it'll tell you what they're for, but others not so much. They just show you the multi-block. So I'm guessing when the time comes, we'll figure it out. Like there's a fluid centrifuge. Uh, this guy does like oil breakdowns, but it also does some other stuff. Uh, there's this chemical reactor dude that does... I have no idea. It turns liquid carbonic acid and liquid pain-free lead into liquid bubbly lead, which sounds cool, which turns into a bubbly lead gas. I have no idea. And it eventually makes soda lead. Oh, neat. That can be used into irradiated lead, dry cleaned lead, clean pressed lead, destabilized lead, spicy lead gas, liquid spicy lead. Are you following me? Liquid treated lead. I have no idea what's happening. We're just continuing liquid steamed lead, steamed lead gas, precipitated lead, dipped lead, filtered lead gas, dirty lump clamp, clean lump clamp, slurry, lead crystal, lead shard, clump, dirty lead. Oh my goodness. And then I guess you can smelt it into ingots. 
So I guess it's like, instead of mechanisms, like five step process for ore cleaning, this looks like it's about 30 steps. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna do it, but it's kind of cool to know that it's there. So I'm just showing you guys some of the stuff in this, uh, in this, in this machinery chapter. Um, so I think what we wanna do is we wanna start looking at using machinery to get basically populated PCBs from the assembler. So we're gonna need some molten tin, but that's, you know, we can just melt it down in the end cap, so not a big deal. Uh, and then we're gonna need another couple things, most of which are needed to be made in the uh, in the assembler itself. So not a big deal. I don't know that you have to do like the craziness to progress, right? I think it's just like, a, here's a fun, who knows how many ore multiplications you get from that. Um, that said, then we can get into mechanism. Then we can also get into chemistry, which uh, I think, remember, uh, chemistry is fun. Now you don't need a degree in chemical engineering yet. Cool. Um, yeah, so make sure you have decent power sources available. Uh, that's cool. I like that idea. I always like when, when there's something that needs a lot of power. And then we would eventually get into the end game, right? I think we're a ways away from that. So let's look at what I want to work on today. And ideally, uh, the hint at the beginning of the episode that I had uh, the, the um, resourceful crops chapter open is probably where it's at. So I want to get into mystical agriculture. Primarily because I suspect there's going to be some resources that I can grow that I can't otherwise get, like by EMC purposes. So I want to just have the... Uh-oh, I think we're out of pollution capturing over here. What happened? What's going on? Oh, yeah, no, that's a problem. Yep, I'm going to have to go vacuum that stuff up. I'm just going to put you guys away for now. I should probably put this charcoal dust and stuff into like a drawer that voids. Yeah, I should probably do that. All right, you should be cool. And then, uh, hey, let's go vacuum up some pollution, huh? I just noticed this up here. I'm like, wait, why is this happening? All right, that's filling up, right? Cool. I don't know if this needs to actually be... It might actually need to be equipped. Yeah, I think the pollution is just going under me. Oh, you didn't equip. <laughs> I was like, why isn't that working now? Oh, there we go. Now now it's actually vacuuming up the... Yeah, so the bag does need to be equipped in your inventory. So anyway, let's look at the uh, mad missile agriculture today. Mostly because I think we'll have resources that we want to produce uh, using missile agriculture. And then we can start getting into some of the more complex machines and deeper end stuff. We're also going to want to be doing some more automations. I would very much like to be able to automate the multi-block process. So pretty soon we're going to want to figure out how that's going to work. We're gonna have to figure out, you know, is, is there some kind of machine in this block or in this pack? Maybe RF Tools has something. Usually it has like a, a thing that can build structures for me. So we'll see. All right, let me get this cleaned up and we'll be right back. So what I'm thinking I'll do here is just drop down an interface and maybe we could configure you. Do we have wool? We could probably get some wool uh, and leaves. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's get some wool. Well, actually, I'm 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 just gonna keep you in the in the in the in here for now. I don't think you're going anywhere, so I think you'll be fine. And then leaves. The problem is, is we overflowed our output chest, which I knew would happen eventually. Um, so I should have been prepared better for that, but I wasn't because you know dire. All right, you go here and here, and that should be cool. So what I'm gonna do basically is replace the interface here. Cool. And then we'll hook this up to a cable that can run down. Deal? I think there's some cabling we can connect to. Sweet. Right? So then sulfur dust goes in there uh, and it should poof, go away. Perfect. Nice. All right, now that deals with that problem. I also, I don't think I did it on camera. I did it off camera, didn't I? Uh, I put them in drawers with void upgrades. So, no problemo. So let's look into mystical agriculture. So in order to get into mystical agriculture, right, really to get started, we need some infusion pedestals and infusion altars. Now the altar is going to need uh, a whole bunch of stuff uh, and the pedestal is going to need a whole bunch of stuff. So let's add them to our to-do. Did I put them both on there? No, not yet. So let's do infusion... Alter as well. So nothing in here is too crazy. The only thing that's really kind of new is this gold chandelier, which needs lumicorn rods. Uh, so you can kind of see up here on the top of my list, I've got a bunch of stuff. So we've got a lot of lumicorn seeds. 
these guys, right? Um, I'm just gonna snag one for now. And we have some little corn rods. Now to get these, we just need to plant the seeds on end moss, um, which I don't know if we've got, do we have any creeping moss? Did we learn that yet? No. Let me pop into the end and see if I can find some. It has EMC, so once I find some, then we should be cool. So I'll be right back. So it looks like there's crystal grass. Is that the same thing? That'll get me crystal moss, but that's not the same as creeping moss for end moss. So close, but new cigar. That will get me some chorus stuff though. So if I decided I needed that, we could do that, but that's not what we're after. So this is crystal. We want creeping. So there's a difference. Now here's where all the lumicorn came from. So is it is it is it safe to say maybe it like like it exists in here? Uh, end moss. So there's end moss here. Blooming something something. Something here has to be this stuff that I need, right? Because this is end moss, and I could probably just silk touch that up, but I'd like to get that creeping moss if I can. That's some, right? That's what we want. There, yeah, that's what's up. All right, cool. So now we can EMC that, uh, and that's cool, and now we can make end moss with creeping moss and end stone if we want. But in theory, I might be able to. And I know it's... Hey, cool, that works. Hello, friends. So now we have a lot. And if we ever need more, we know where to come. Awesome. And we can also, you know, make it sort of with EMC. These sulfur springs, that's cool. All right, to home we go. Sweet. All right, so you guys all go away along with you. You can go back in the backpack. Thank you, Silk Touch, for existing. You can go in the backpack. I don't think I've had shears yet. So then we can set up a, I don't think we need any of this stuff no more, right? So let's get rid of all these things. Cool. And we can throw a creeping moss into one of these. And you should be relatively EMCable, or at least most of you are. All right, so creeping moss goes in, lumicorn seed goes in, and there we've got some lumicorn stuff. Nice. And I also want to check out today uh, the FTB power pots. Right? I wouldn't mind investigating, like, what's this stuff all about? Purple terracotta and stellar alloy bricks. I remember that stellar alloy is a lot of work to make. So that needs an end resin processor. Um, okay. And that... That's that multi-block I showed you guys that I said I wasn't sure what it was for. So that's what that's for. Uh, so you need liquid lumicorn resin and melodic alloy ingots, uh, which can come from lots of liquid stuff. <laughs> and end steel ingots, which comes from lots of liquid stuff. And dark steel ingots, which comes from lots of liquid stuff. I think, I think a lot of this is mapped out for you in the better end chapter. So I think it shows you here. Basically these four items turn into these four liquids, which combine to make dark steel. And then you use the dark steel to make end steel using these three items that turn into these three liquids. And then you can make melodic, and then up the cellar alloy. Got it? Good. All right, so do we need that for all these? So we need iron for the first tier, and then we need slime steel for the second tier, and then we need crystal and pink slime for the third tier, and then we need Stellar Alloy for the fourth tier. All right, so we can at least get to tier three without getting into that stuff too much yet. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. All right, now that we have a bunch of Lumicorn ingots, we're going to want to have... Now, a proper infusion altar needs eight things around it, doesn't it? Because if we look at Mystical Agriculture... We'll note that most of these seeds are made in infusion crafting with eight dudes around it. So we're going to need eight infusion pedestals and then one infusion altar. Okay. 
So eight of these and then one of these. So in total, we're going to need four and 32. So 36 gold chandeliers. And then we'll figure out the rest of the other resources in a minute. There we go. Nice. And our mineral berries can go away for now. So what else do we have to make here? Uh, we need some blocks of cured rubber. We need some red banners. We need some quartz pedestals, gold plates, crystal and slime. I think I want to automate the crystal and slime because that seems like a process that we're going to want to have automated, right? Uh, some inferior blocks. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. Is there anything fancy in here that's not in there? No, that all looks about the same, right? Resource-wise, that's the same. Uh, but crystal and pink slime is a lot of processing steps. I would like to automate this. Uh, so that means that we need to automate these two resources. Um, grains of pesiality comes from a pulsating crystal, right? Which comes from this process ender nuggets and diamonds and an ender crafter from extended crafting. Now here's the question. Can I automate this? Hopefully we're going to test it out. We're going to find out. I don't know if this is automatable. I'm hoping now here's another question is, can I make that over here? Cause wasn't there some stuff that could be made here that is also makeable here? Or was I crazy about that? Infusion pedestal. Similar things were makeable over here, right? But maybe not. Wasn't there a reason that I made this? It was because it was like maybe better than the other one. We can test it just to see. Though, yeah, no, this is a whole different mechanic, right? Because this is that. This is the one. This is the one. This is equal to this. These are the two that I'm talking about. But this guy's definitely his own his own beast. So we'll look at automating ender crafting. And then finally, I need to automate pink slime, which isn't too bad. I may want, how's my pink slime resource tank over here? Meh, not great. And that's a question. Refined storage is really good at automating that. How's applied energistics these days when it comes to automating that stuff? It's an exceptionally good question, right? I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have to find out. So I found in, in, in JEI here, there's the packaged auto mod. And that one has an ender package crafter. So I wonder if that's what we want. Let's try and make one of these. So I need enhanced ender ingots, which is just an ender star, which is, I'm gonna make this off camera. Uh, redstone catalysts, which is redstone ingots. Uh, crystalline catalysts, which is no big deal. Yeah, I can pull this off. Emmy packaged dude, packaging component. Yeah, that's all doable. I'll be right back. I'm gonna try this off camera. All right. Ender package crafter. So do you need like networky connections or something? I have no idea. We're going to find out together. Not sure how this works. Not sure if I need more than one. I don't know if this is okay. So he does connect. So that's cool. Ender package crafter. He has power. Uh, he's not using a channel though. Okay. All right, so I think I've got the things I need. Um, so I made a res package recipe encoder. So there's two real mods here that we're looking at. Uh, there's packaged auto, which is the mod that allows you to automate packaging a bunch of items into one smaller package. And this works around the limitation that regular AE has of a small crafting pattern, right? A small number of things, right? So if we look at packaged auto, we can get much bigger recipes. But then in support of other mods, like extended crafting specifically, uh, we need to, you know, handle this in a, in a good way. So that's what, where did it go? This thing is for, the Ender Package Crafter. So I don't know if that actually needs to be connected to the network, but I guess we're gonna figure it out. So let's just play with it a little bit and see what we can't come up with. Um, so what I'm gonna start with actually, yeah, let's keep this here for a sec. Cause I wanna see, do, does the package guy need? All right, so the package recipe encoder does not need a channel. That's good to know. Uh, how about the packager itself? Does that need a channel? It needs power at least. Does it need a channel? Maybe not. Yes, yes it does actually. All right, cool. Okay. And then I'm going to assume the unpacker does as well. All right, so let's take a look at the packaged recipe encoder. I'm gonna stick you up here. And this is where you're gonna live. Look how many look how many slots there are. It's a little bananas. But this is where you can set up, 
I guess you can have multiple recipes per dude. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Look at that. I like the sound of that. So if we wanted to make, for example, uh, pulsating crystals, we need the ender nuggets and diamonds. So change recipe type. Ordered crafting. Oh, that's cool. Basic, advanced, elite. Look, it's automatically graying out the, the table sizes for me. Oh, look, an ender is already supported in there. So that's cool. Now, I don't know what these things do. Combination. I like it. All right, cool. So now what we want to do is get ourselves what we need in order to make a pulsating crystal. So we need ender nuggets. So we need ender ingots, right? Do you know how to make those? No, but you're going to learn. So you're going to be this in that mode. And then you're going to be... Yeah, you're not going to allow me to click, are you? So put you back in this mode. I wish this worked. Uh, but you need to be an ender pearl and an iron ingot. Make that. And that's going to go into the induction smelter. And this one's going to go in here. So now if I wanted ender nuggets times 11, it's going to make two of those guys for me and then do the thing. Perfect. 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 That's cool. Just making sure this is working. Boom. Nice. All right. Good deal. Then we want this and a diamond. And you're going to go up here. And you're going to click on to that. And look, it figures out mm -hmm. what it should do. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Save. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Busy here. All right. So I'm not sure if this is right, but I'm putting the Ender Package Crafter here. And then on top of that, I'm putting the Unpacker. And then up here, the Packer. And then maybe you go in there? I don't know. We're winging it, folks. We are figuring it out. And then let's get let's get a P2P tunnel here so that we can connect this up properly. So effectively, You should be still configured from the previous one. There you go. So that should bring you guys online. Cool. And then you're connected to over here, which is using three channels now, because it was one from over there and now two from here, it looks like. Sweet. And you're getting power, which is good dish. So then if I want a pulsating crystal, does this work? We're gonna find out. Missing recipe package. All right, we're gonna have to figure out how that works. Maybe it goes into here, the package recipe holder. It goes into the top one, not the bottom one. Let's try that again. Oh, now there's a thing here, so that's cool. Interesting. I think you actually need two of these. One for the packager and one for the unpackager. So let's see. Does this guy remember what he did? He does. So now if we have two of them, one for the packager and one for the unpackager, now I want a pulsating crystal? Hey, it's doing a thing. Well, that's cool. And hey, look, it's moving. That's even cooler. I think that works. Now, here's the question. Will it import? I assume not. I assume we're going to want an importer. An ME import bus here. Is that a sharp assessment of my part? Oh, no. Actually, yeah, it looks like you did you do that. You don't need an importer. Hey, that's cool. Well, that's a thing. 
Nice. All right. Well, now we know how to automate that guy. And I suspect I can have many recipes in there because it looks like there's 20 slots. So as we need to automate this machine more, we can do a lot of things. I'm cool with this. I think this is neat. We're going to have to figure out how that equates to this, but I think I've got the basic gist of how this works now. Now, I don't know if these two have to be next to each other, the packager and the unpackager. I'm sure the unpackager needs to be touching the ender package crafter. This guy can probably be anywhere, um, but it's up to you how you want to do that. I think it's, you know, it kind of makes sense to me to have them next to each other because then, like, you know that these two, you know, work together kind of deal but we'll see um you know let's let's go from there so next up we want to get the rest of this stuff going so let's let's do that um so the grains uh of 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 of, of peasiality will be this come on there you go from the pulsating crystal and that goes in the pulverizer, right? Uh, so now we've got that covered. Now pink slime ingot. We're gonna want disillusion chambers. Now these, unfortunately, we're gonna have to lock the recipes for. So I'm thinking we might want multiple disillusion chambers. Um, I'm thinking this one should stay manual for any manual crafting we have to do. And then any automated crafting we wanna do, we want a separate disillusion chamber for. So let me make another one of those. And then this is going to very quickly get to the point of, I need to automate, I need to automate, well, first off, let's have another bucket, but we really need to automate that shrinking machine process. I would love to have this automated. It's a to-do list for me. So yeah, let's uh, come back after I do it manually, but maybe in the next episode or two, we'll do it more. So sturdy stone and treated wood planks, 24. Cool. And then um, I think I automated redstone ingots, right? I did. Sweet. Good job, me. See, look, automated. Haha, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I did that. I did that because I'm, you know, I'm cool like that. And then eight of these. Sweet. And then what gets tossed in there? Plastic. Okay, cool. So let's get our copy and paste gadget going. Not this one. So you go in here. Let's get our pity frame. Save that guy. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool to automate this process? I feel like it absolutely would be. I feel like it, and it should be automatable. I should be able to do this. I just have to figure out what mods in the pack. I'm guessing maybe RF Tools has like the space chamber doohickey. So maybe I could do something like that with the builder. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Probably, probably that. But anyway, we'll figure that out in a minute. So now we want our dissolution chamber and we're gonna automate this one uh, should we have a room for automated machines, like an auto crafting area? Maybe down in the basement -y area? That might not be a bad idea. So like if you're going to be this big monstrosity of auto crafting, you know, regular recipes, uh, maybe we could have um, over here-ish, you know, we could we could expand this out a little bit, but then we could have... We could borrow some channels here, or it could be over here-ish. Maybe over here would be a better spot for it. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Um, so you know what I'll do? I'll put the dissolution chamber here, right next to these guys. Um, and we're probably going to want to have power under him. So let's get some energy pipes. Okay. And what I'll get is... Well, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get from our backpack a flux point. Oh, 
on the Daryl 20 network. You set to extract. You're getting power now. Sweet. So give me gold and iron. And what I'm thinking is, here's, here's, here's a thought. Can I lock those inputs now? I think I can. Perfect. Now I would like to have a chest on top. And this is what I want to test if this will work. Because I'm not sure if it will, but we're going to find out. Okay? But if there's a chest on top and you guys are in there, can I say input from the top is pull? Nice. Okay, cool. Now, follow-up question. Can I say if I have a bucket? Let's say of pink slime. Now, can I put you in here? No, I can't. That would have been way too easy. Will that input? That is the question. It will. Well, no, that's not entirely what I wanted to do. Hold on. Gold and iron. And then what I want is an importer. I have one already. And then a ME interface. So what I'm thinking is we could put the ME interface here and we could put the importer here like that. Does that sound cool? Maybe. All right, cool. So now if I put these guys in here, what they should do is they should auto import in, right? And it's and it's 500 millibuckets per ingot. So if I taught the system that one bucket and four of each ingot makes two ingots, then it balances, right? So now you made the two ingots already. Now if I put this in here, will he pull? That's the question. Is there a, oh. There's not a there's not an auto pull for this guy. That's annoying. That's annoying. You don't have an automatic pull thing, do you? That would have been way too easy. All right. So what if we did pipes? Bear with me a sec. Item pipes with a filter. And we said something like this. I'm just testing now at this point. But if we put this in here and this, now only pink slime buckets can be transferred in, right? Um, so if I put you in here, I didn't want to do that. I keep doing it backwards. <laughs> Dire, please. Well, at least we know that it pulled the bucket out. So that's kind of cool. We're going to need another bucket. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn this guy on real quick so you can start making more pink slime. Maybe turn this guy on. That'll make him even better. Yeah, that'll get us lots of pink slime. I'll let that run for a minute. I don't think it matters um, which mobs make pink slime. I think they all make the amount at the same rate. All right, so now if I stick this in here, will that go in? Did it go in? It did go in. Okay, so that's good to know at least. So we can at least route it that way, right? Um, which kind of kills my design a little bit, but that's okay. So maybe what I'll do maybe what I'll do we'll see. All right, so what if we did it like this with an entangled block? Cuz entangled solves all your wiring problems. Right? So what I could have here then so instead of you pulling, okay, what I'm going to do is just have you I wonder if he could insert the bucket. Because if he could insert the bucket, then we could do this all in one, couldn't we? No, but I need to insert two sets of ingots per bucket, and he won't be able to insert the two sets of ingots at a time. Right? That's the reason we need the chest, because we wanna we wanna do two crafts at once. So like one bucket and four iron and four gold equals two slime. That's the pattern we want to do. So we need this to be put into a chest as a buffer so that it can access it. Got it? Um so with that said, we do want this 
here. Okay. And then I'm just going to set you to extract from the chest. And then what he'll do is he'll pull the items like that. Cool? Okay. So now if I empty this chest and I empty this guy and we tell him, hey, your pattern is a bucket of pink slime, which we're going to have to automate making a bucket of pink slime, but I'm sure we can make that happen, right? But a bucket of pink slime and for these, right, we'll make two pink slime ingots, right? Two and two makes one, so four and four makes two. Okay, because this guy also needs, wait, is it a bucket per? I thought it was 500 millibuckets per. Am I crazy? I thought it was 500 millibuckets per. Oh, then that makes this way easier to automate. Never mind, we don't need uh, half this stuff no more. Okay, what now? That's weird. But anyway, no, this is way easier to automate now. Yes, it is a bucket's worth. I thought it was... My bad. Well, that makes life a whole lot easier. Because now it's two iron, two gold, and one pink slime bucket. Right? So that means that we can do this. You ready? And I want you in here as well. So we don't have to do any of this entangled mess. What we can do is like we do with our thermal machines, this guy can auto output out the back, right? Now another machine we might need to, the ones that do things like, uh, that need like less than a bucket's worth. But if we configure your output to push in the back, hopefully you still accept from the back. But that's what we're going to test right now. So if I said I wanted a pink slime ingot, can you make that for me? Yes, look, it's crafting and the bucket is in there. And this guy, that's cool. Now I thought he, eh, we might need the import bus still. We'll see. So I think the push is only going to push from here. Yeah, we need to clear out the buckets still. Which is a little annoying. Which is a little annoying, but we could do that out the top, right? And then we should be fine. It's gonna use an extra channel here, but meh. And that should clear the bucket. Device online, bucket gone. Nice. All right, so that clears out the bucket. So now we don't technically need you to push no more because we can just have the input bus handle that for us. So, hey, that's pink slime, awesome. You know what? I can make this even easier. You ready for this? Ender tank. Colored pink. Okay. Now you. This should be a lot easier. Do we have fluid pipes handy? We do. Okay. So what if we did this? So remember, this dissolution chamber will only ever be used to make pink slime ingots. So we don't need to do the bucket thing. That would make sense if we were going to use other liquids, but we're only ever going to do pink slime in this one, right? Because we have to lock the pattern. So, forget this guy. I was hoping I could do that, but I can't. Okay. What we do is we put you back to output on the back with a push. We set this. Now he's always going to be full with pink slime. And then we go remove the pink slime bucket from the pattern. So now it's just two gold, 
two iron equals pink slime ingot in the pattern. And that should be cool, right? So now if I said I want some pink slime ingots, like 10 of them, or 11, let's say, he's going to insert, and we can get the speed upgrades for this guy, right? He's going to do that, and that's cool. Got it? And now the pink slime stays in, and then it makes them all. And it's pushing out to the back, which means we're getting our pink slime ingots. Cool? I like that. All right, good deal. All right, now we do have to wrap up the episode here, but we made some good progress on a few things. One, we got this automated, which is huge. Two, we've got um, pink sliming that's automated. So I wanna start automating all the things, obviously. All the things that I feel like we're gonna need a lot of, we should automate. And pink slime is used in quite a few recipes, um, or at least the crystallized pink slime is used in quite a few recipes, right? Like look how many things this is used in. Um, so having this automated, I think is gonna be useful for us. Um, now, I'm going to want to automate a lot of things like this. So uh, some of it will be done on camera. Some of it will be done off camera. Now, can you be reset? Oh, good. You can. Uh, yeah, some on camera, some off camera. What we'll do is we'll come back next time and continue down this path of automating all the resources that we think we're going to need a lot of. Uh, for now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.